Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from beautiful Waikiki Beach. Uh, we are I'm at the 25th floor looking out at beautiful the beautiful horizon. It always just draws me to the Lord when I think, when I look three miles out at the ocean, uh, I know that it goes three miles deep. And that reminds me of just, just the, the, the depth of, of the Lord's love, the depth of the Lord's uh, wisdom, uh, the, the breadth and depth of the teaching of the Catholic Church. And right next to my condo here in Waikiki is uh, the St. Augustine's Catholic Church. And my, our radio show is actually just about directly above the altar. So privileged to be here in Waikiki. And we invite people, if you're coming to Waikiki, by all means, go to our website, deepadventure.com, hit the contact form. Maybe we can get together for a cup of coffee or something. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you know, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, is coming out like, is it, I think it is out right just about now. 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And, uh, and I'm only introducing it like that because we have a real cowboy on our show today, uh, a man who rides surfboards, a man who rides motorcycles, a man who r rides horses and does more than that, breeds championship uh, thoroughbreds. At his farm, as I like to say, ranch in uh, the Ocala area, of Florida, uh, one of Archbishop Wenske's oldest and best friends uh, rode with us uh, down to uh, uh, Key West together. He's the president of a, 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 I don't know how to say it, the pharmaceutical company. He develops miracle drugs. Uh, working on right now for the cure of cancer, and uh, and so I can't imagine a better cowboy to have on the show today than our good friend Tom Equals. Tom, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Bear. It's always a pleasure, and you know when I when I uh, uh, come together with you on a show like this, or in the several times we've met in person, uh, you know the the love that Jesus taught us is exemplified in the aloha spirit that you share with us. Yeah, you know we had we we t t t why don't we talk story a little bit about that ride we had uh, when we were filming? I think it was season two or. Of Long Ride Home, I forget which season it was in, but yeah, I think it was season two. Talk story with us about that. We we met up and we rode. Uh, we met up in Miami, I believe, right? And we. Uh, no, you you came to uh, Ocala to the farm. But I think you came to down the, uh, to the ranch. Excuse me. But I think you, I think you I think you rode with us down down uh, when we went from Miami to Key West. I did, and I did. Uh, and that was quite a ride, wasn't it? It was. It, 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 it was, it in was the a heat. long, arduous ride. For yeah, sure. it was, it was uh, uh, probably uh, seven or eight hours, and it was very, very hot that day. And it was the opening day of lobster season, so the traffic was a little rough. And uh, uh, you, you realize that uh, you know, in the in the uh, uh, Florida sun on a highway that's not moving, a Harley Davidson is not always the best vehicle uh, to be in uh, if you're if you're interested in air conditioned comfort. Yeah, you know, the the Archbishop, I kept saying, you know, we, we'd be cruising along. Cruising isn't the right word. Stop and go. We were more like the lobsters ourselves on those motorcycles getting boiled. But <laughs> but I could, Archbishop, should we pull over? No, let's keep going. Archbishop, should we pull over? No, let's keep going. So he's a tough rider, too. Eventually, I just pulled over. I don't know why, but my motorcycle just pulled over and <laughs> took a break. But that, 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 uh, that feeling that we got there, being with you and being with Archbishop and being with the Emmaus riders down there, too, uh, we started out our, our, by having cigars with the Archbishop in uh, Little Havana area, which was great, and uh, just just that just that experience uh, uh, riding into Key West and the fortitude that it took. That was a tough ride. That takes that takes fortitude. And in your life, we've since we've last talked, there's been a lot of a lot of stuff that's uh, like. What? Tell me about just the other day. When was it? When you were you were surfing and you had a big closeout set on a beach break at Ormond Beach. Oh, well, uh, I had had a, uh, let's see, this would be the fall of 2021. I had a, a horse, I still ride uh, fairly actively and, and had a horse do a somersault 
And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, this is a testament to my ability to stay in the saddle, but I, I didn't fall off the horse. Unfortunately, we landed upside down with the horse on top of me, which is, it was a very, very serious injury. So, so I had to, uh, you know, because it was, uh, you know, the sort of life and death there for a while and, and the uh, broken bones in the hip and pelvic region and uh, my, my nose was broken in three places. All these teeth here were fractured. Uh, I had a concussion. And um, and so, uh, uh, you know, I, wo I woke up a couple of days later in the hospital. Fortunately, most of the surgery was over with. And, and my nose had been broken many times in the past. So it actually looks better now than it did before the accident. <laughs> So you got so you got time it was professionally adjusted, you know. But it's every cowboy's worst nightmare is to be rolled up on by a horse. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was just an unfortunate experience. Uh, it's probably the worst uh, accident I'd ever had on a horse. Fortunately, the horse wasn't hurt. Um, uh, that's I've, I've had him since he, I, and I helped birth that horse actually. So I know, I, I think I know this horse, right? It's the horse. Well, you that's rode right. That yeah. The horse yeah. I was riding, Hidalgo, the horse I was riding right. in the, 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 uh, long ride home, uh, scenes at, at the farm and, uh, uh, and, and Hidalgo's a, a great horse. It wasn't any thing that he did. There was a, there was like an undermining of the ground and the ground collapsed slightly which caused him to trip and yeah. and so it surprised both of us but uh, he stayed there and watched over me and i was saying he must have been broken hearted you know so was there anyone riding with you or, or were you alone or how did they find you you know fortunately I, I i was riding with company which is uh, when you're out in the woods riding, that's that's always a a, a good thing to do. <laughs> as well, I learned. You, do you remember? You know, my my new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Right. So I act like I'm a real cowboy. My wife is a cowgirl. Do you remember? But I don't oh, know. Well, you're both, actually you're both extremely good riders. Uh, I, I, but do you? I, I was trying to do like a, a dismount the way Kevin Costner did in one of his old films. I forget which one it was. And so I did a dismount without the stirrup, and I ended up under the horse. <laughs> so yeah. I hope maybe you didn't see that move I had, but that was pretty. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. One. <laughs> I was yeah. seeing stars, you know, but they weren't. They weren't. It, but it was. But it was light out. So, um, but I know. So you. So you had a lot of adversity uh, coming back from from that injury, and and then you said you were had a surfing accident too recently, right? Oh, it wasn't so much a surfing accident. Uh, you know, you, uh, you're a, a, a you know a champion surfer, so so you know that uh, uh, you if you're surfing every once in a while, you wipe out, right? It, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, surfers small more than little babies do, actually, when it comes down to it. <laughs> and uh, uh, this was after my accident and mm. uh, recovery from the surgery. I was feeling good and and uh, decided to go surfing and it was like five or six feet over by Warman Beach and uh, you know I caught the wave which then immediately closed out and the reason the waves were breaking high there it's it's on a sandbar sort mm. of like in Hawaii you use reefs right in, in, in Florida on the east coast if you know where the sandbars are you can find these good breaks uh, but the uh, the wave closed out and and drove me into the sandbar and put me through the washing machine effect and and, uh, you know, I got myself back to the beach and I felt like I did about two weeks after the surgery, you know, mm. so I sort, of, sort of temporarily undid some of the progress I'd been making over the prior year. But uh, I, I, I decided that I might wait a while before I go surfing again. <laughs> well, you, you know, the thing is, is there's, the beaches, I'm going to say when we would go out there and compete, especially tandem surfing when we we're lifting the women. Uh, you know, over our heads competing. The sand there is like cement. It's not like the soft sand we have here in Hawaii where your feet sink into it. It's like falling on a patio. So, oh, yeah. right? It's pretty can be pretty tough. So, but the big well, question you, is, oh, go ahead. You, you might be able to relate to this because I, you know, you have to uh, I, I found that uh, you know, adversity is best handled with a little bit of humor, even if it's uh, you know, at your, at your own expense. Yeah, as it usually is. Yeah, yeah. But for, for about two weeks after that, I had so much sand. You know, <laughs> I, I, it was like I had sand in my pores, you know. Yes, yeah. And yeah. you know, I'd be scratching, and I had like little pieces of sand that was coming out of my skin. Well, know? I will just say, you know, there's a that's there's how a, hard it is. No, uh, there's a place here we love called Sandy Beach. My sons love to body surf there. 
uh, it's a body surfing beach because it's a shore break beach. And the last time I went there, I remember the same thing. I was, I mean, there were, I had orifice I didn't know about, you know, the little speckles of sand were just embedded in me. And I was, that was the last time I just remember doing yeah. a, 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 you know, almost like a, a dive into the sand. And, you know, we, we had to take a break here in a moment, but you also, we wanted, you had, you had your experience in Vietnam. Did you surf in Vietnam? Were you one of those guys at China Beach? Uh, well, I, actually, I was stationed at Marble Mountain, which was right on the ocean, mm. and we were able to surf a little bit, you know. But I was I was flying, in com I flew Cobra gunships, so I was in combat almost every day. So there wasn't a lot of time for surfing. But uh, yeah, and you had there a couple heart. occasions when I was able to borrow a surfboard, and and there was uh, there were there were some waves. I think that's the coolest thing we have here. We had a Jimmy Buffett Museum here in Hawaii for a while, and a friend of mine, Mark Fragelli, was a curator. And in there, they had a they had a helicopter, an actual uh, mock up of a helicopter inside the museum, with the surfboards, uh, a surfboard that was, had been used in China Beach in that area. I I think that's the the coolest thing in the most uh, gnarly situation, that you could be checking out the surf in the middle of a war and. Uh, uh, and, and have that opportunity, that little moment of sanity in the midst of that. We're talking with Tom Equals. Uh, we, he's a member of a cast member of Long Ride Home. Back in the day, he has a beautiful thoroughbred horse ranch in, in Ocala, Florida, and uh, so many more things. We're going to get back and talk with him about the virtues, but we've got to take a break. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bears Man Cave Community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody, Mama Bear's out there. You got to get ready. Go to Amazon.com. Go to Barnes & Noble. Go to your Catholic bookstore. Go to Sophia Publishing. Go to Bear, the Bear, DeepAdventure.com. But we're counting on you to get our new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? My wife gave me that subtitle. Where have, she's, she's actually inspiration for this book. We're riding along the, the, the beach here on going past Diamond Head in Waikiki, and she said, you're going to love this song. And she turned up Paula Cole singing, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And I go, oh, that's my next book. And so we've written this book, 12 Rules for Manliness. It's really no apology, uh, like, a, like, a, like something my guest Tom Equals would say to a, to a brother or to a younger man. This is how you need to live your life as a man. So it's, a lot of it is practical, cardinal, virtue-type stuff, uh, but always uh, uh, rooted in the theological virtues. Uh, some of the, the titles are like a man's got to have a, 
man's got to have a creed, a code that he can live by. You got to be a man of your word. You got to get the job done, cut hell or high water. A man's got to be dangerous. And one of my favorite titles, How a Man Treats a Woman, defines him. So this book is a must read. I think, um, I think young, young women especially would like this book. It'll help them understand really what they want to look for in, in a man. And we don't talk about masculinity in this book. We just talk about manliness. The word man in Latin, I'm starting to learn my Latin, is uh, the, word, the root word for man is ver which is also the, where the word virtue comes from. So manliness is nothing but, but being a man of virtue. And we have such a man with us today who uh, actually has a beautiful painting in the, uh, I believe it's in the cathedral uh, in, in the Orlando area with, with Bishop Noonan, uh, a painting on the virtues. We have Arch, one of Archbishop's l- l- friends from their youth, from their college days, hard motorcycle rider, a president of a, a pharmaceutical company that's that's innovative and developing new some some new uh pharmaceuticals uh, for help with immunology and, and for those with people with uh, pretty gnarly cancer situations he's got a thoroughbred horse ranch up in o- the kala era where we f- Ocala area when we filmed him there my son uh, uh shane um filmed with his drones running alongside these beautiful these five beautiful young colts so that's beautiful and then uh, Tom Equals told me how much the value of those five Colts together was. And I thought, well, that better be more careful with the drone, I guess. And so we have our, our, our adventure guest today, Tom Equals. Uh, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. As always, Bear, it's a great honor and pleasure. Well, we were talking about uh, you're getting to surf every now and then in, in the insanity of the Vietnam War, but I don't want to dwell on it. I, I know, uh, but you received several medals. There. I, I know one was the believe the purple heart but there was another one i can't re- recall the, the very rare one that you received um i, I received two distinguished flying crosses yes is, is the highest medal for aerial combat and you were what type of helicopter were you flying i flew a, a cobra gunship uh, it's a uh, it's a gunship most people have seen it uh, over the years it, it came out in the late 60s and and is actually st- still used by the Marines today. And you used that to support the ground troops quite a lot. Well, there were, there were a number of missions, uh, uh, ground su- close air support for ground troops, um, uh, attack helicopter missions where where enemy units were identified, and and rescue missions mm. uh, uh, where you you know go in and and provide cover for the rescue ships going into. Um, you know, help or evacuate wounded people, things like that. So you, so the 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 uh, the inspiration uh, for your. We, we were talking just before we took the break. The painting on the virtues. Um, it's interesting because in that in that um, cathedral, there is this painting uh, of you with the the virtue uh, uh, the painting of the virtues, and it, it's an image of Jesus, but it looks a lot like you because. You had that long hair and beard going on back there during the, and then and interestingly enough, in one of the pane glass windows, uh, th- back in the day, the bishops were, when they would would be doing these cathedrals, often there would be a stained glass uh, image of them. And though it is, and so I'm looking at Bishop Newton and go that, and that looks a little bit like Archbishop Winskin. He goes, well, indeed it is, you know. So <laughs> both of you guys, these are these college buddies. So you guys were college buddies, right, back in the day. Well, we've known each other for a long time. It's uh, you know, forty plus years. And so, and you and you you went to battle with for the bishop, uh, for the people, uh, in in I believe in the Miami area as an attorney. Uh, you went. Well, to- when I when I got out of law school, uh, I, I went down to Miami, and 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 in part because of my experience in Vietnam, because I felt, I felt, uh, you know, the the. Uh, the reason we were supposed to be in Vietnam was to uh, protect democratic ideals and concepts of freedom and justice. But when I came back home, I recognized there was a lot of work to be done here and I could do it best as an attorney. And so I always devoted a part of my law practice to what's called pro bono work. And uh, uh, from the very beginning of of that legal career, that's where actually uh, Archbishop Winsky and I met. Oh, I uh, see. Okay. At the uh, Chrome Detention Facility, uh, they had a basically a concentration camp out in the Everglades filled with with uh, Haitians, and they weren't allowing access to churches or the press or even lawyers. Um, 
So uh, uh, I, I perceive that as, uh, as an important uh, social justice event because you, you avoid uh, problems like you see, you know, that grew in Nazi Germany due to no oversight uh, whenever you can close things off from public scrutiny. So I brought a lawsuit to allow churches to come in, and it was principally uh, uh, a priest, Thomas Wensky, on behalf of the Catholic Church that was doing much of the missionary work with Haitians, for churches to be able to come in and provide religious services and religious counseling to the people that were in that camp. And and that's where we met. Uh, I see, and, okay. And, and we, uh, we became good friends because he has a he has a, a love of adventure and fly. We we uh, we flew airplanes together, rode motorcycles together, and and uh, he became a part of my family and, and baptized all my children and that kind of thing. And in fact, my two youngest girls took the gifts to the altar when he was anointed a bishop. How beautiful! How beautiful! But you guys are both, in a way, there. Your images are both there in the in the um, in the cathedral with, with Bishop Noonan. Tell me though about this painting. Uh, what inspired you to paint uh, up on the virtues? Well, <clears throat> that, that, the, the concept for that painting came to me back in the late 1990s. And it took me a while to uh, sort of visualize what I, I had in mind. But the, the idea is that, that <clears throat> well, you know, through Jesus and through God's grace, we can be saved at any time. Um, that doesn't that doesn't mean that that there uh, uh, shouldn't be a focus on virtue, you know, as a part of life. That, mm -hmm. uh, but I recognize that in in our society, um, we don't uh, teach virtue. Mm -hmm. in many respects so we teach so virtue to, we teach virtue signaling but it, that's not virtue that yeah. you, virtue is doing the stuff so so I, I started to think about you know what virtues were important and i you know i was thinking about you know what what uh the things that jesus not only taught us because jesus was you know the greatest teacher he was a world transforming teacher so, so much of what he had to say w w taught us things that relate to certain virtues, but also how did he live his life? Mm. You know, because there are some virtues there that uh, that he taught us through his example. Mm. You know, the 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 ability to walk that walk, you know, to the cross. You know, knowing you know what's in front of you, but doing God's will and serving your Father. Uh, you know that that's courage, mm. for example. Courage, you know, yeah. You know, at at the, you know, uh, apex of that virtue. So so these are these are the kinds of things that I tried to build into that uh, painting that's at the cathedral. So beautiful. I think the, uh, and you've li and you've lived that life. Uh, and I we you, I think a, a great uh, the word that you you meant the thing that you brought up was fortitude or courage, courage one of the four cardinal virtues. And I think we really, I think if there's one thing that would uh, exemplify a man is, is, is that gift, that gift of coraggio, the fortitude to face adversity. I like to say face adversity and turn it into an adventure. Uh, you really find God in the, in the world, in the, in the midst of, of adversity. Think about the three young men in, in, the, in the fiery furnace in the times of Daniel. It was in the midst of that fire that they, uh, that they uh, encountered God. And what's interesting is in the midst of that fire, when they came out, they didn't even smell of smoke. You know, that, 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 is, that, is, that is us offering up to the Lord uh, our lives in the, time, in the time of adversity. We're talking with Tom Equals. Uh, he's a good friend of, of, of ours. He's, been a, he's a cast member of Long Ride Home and a good friend of Archbishop Wensky. He has a, a ranch there in Ocala, a beautiful, <laughs> unbelievably beautiful a horse ranch raises thoroughbred horses, uh, champion horses. We'll talk. We'll come right back and talk more about what it means to be the horseman and what you learn about that that virtue of fortitude, and uh, uh, really just from the horses themselves. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure.
This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Compass. Some folks have a magnetic compass. All of us have an internal one. Over my left shoulder on my slab shelf rests a marine compass used by my great-grandpa in the late 1800s, commercial fishing on the Columbia River Bar. It's the smallest square box, the dark wood one right there behind me. I gaze at it from time to time, wondering what storms and serious fog banks my kin face from their 26-foot sailing rig in the frequently tormenting waters where the big river collides with the Pacific Ocean. A magnetic compass is a surefire easier to follow than trying to discern and follow one's internal compass. We follow our magnetic compass without wavering. Struggling with our internal compass often puts us into conflicting thoughts, rationalizations, and indecision. 4th century BC Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote, It is the peculiarity of man in comparison with the rest of the animal world that he alone possesses a perception of good and evil. And it's the common perception of these things which makes a family. You know, and family is the greatest influence upon our little hearts and minds, building our moral compass through a myriad of beautiful decisions and indiscretions. Fortunately for me, my conversion to Christ and subsequent Bible learning reinforced my adolescent compass, formed by some plain good folks, my mom and my pa. Christ got me fully centered, pretty much through the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, I can find true north most of the time. Before my commitment to Jesus, I seriously struggled with my moral compass, found myself in front of a judge twice. But that was then, and thank God this is now. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite the mama bears to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Become a member and help support our ministry. Uh, Catholic ministries, we really need people's help. Uh, It's kind of unusual. to be, you know, I know so many people involved in the new evangelization that are so worthy and and doing so much and, and need your help. So support support those people that are out on the front lines. And you mama bears, come to our website, become join and become a mama bear. You get access to all of our radio shows. We have over four hundred radio shows up. You get access to the YouTube version of those shows. Uh, you get access to all thirty three episodes of Long Ride Home, and you get them before even they air, air on the network. So you can sneakily have a brother-in-law come over to the house while you happen to have on the YouTube version of one of our uh, Long Ride Home episodes. The new season is just being released now, uh, 11 episodes from filmed, all filmed here in Hawaii. And you get my whole, the whole catechism series. I, I spent about two and a half years going through the whole catechism while I was down at the beach and teaching from it. So you get so much, but, we, but you give so much too by becoming a member. You get access to... Uh, to a, a one-year uh, study on the virtues, too. And then also it's a way for you to bring 
uh, your husbands and your sons, you know, especially single moms. If you have a single, if you have a son there that's kind of confirmation age or older, why not uh, lead him through the the school of manliness? It's three year curriculum. A lot of fathers lead their sons through that, and you can track. The fathers go through it with the other members of the man cave, but the fathers then can lead their sons to it. They get their own login. They can actually see their son's progress. And once a week, why not watch one of the one of the videos for that month, or one of the, or read through one of the stories for that month, or or do the self assessment, or set some new goals in those those areas of manliness that we talk about. I don't know anybody else that has any that does anything like this, where it's a a father and son application in the school of manliness and mothers, especially single moms, can encourage their their sons to go through that too. So go to deepadventure.com, Mama Bears. We know we know your ferocity, we know your fervor, we know your love for the Lord and for the for the men in your family, and we love you too. We know our ministry kind of runs on your prayers. So love you, Mama Bears. We have with us today Tom Equals. Uh, I don't know, uh, it, you know, how, how to how to introduce this man because he has so much going on. He's really He's, a, he's an artist, he's an author, he's the president of a, of a very significant uh, pharmaceutical company that's innovative, developing uh, new ph- pharmaceutical drugs. He has a, a thoroughbred horse ranch in or- Ocala where he raises champion horses. He's a biker, a pilot, uh, he's, um, he's a good friend with Archbishop Wenske, and uh, just so glad to have you on our show. Welcome back to Om Equals. Well, again, Barry, it's always an honor. Let's talk a little bit more about that virtue of fortitude. What do you, what would you, what would you say to the younger men today uh, about the in, in in that particular area of the virtues? Well, Bear, um, and I want to say this specifically about fortitude, but it, it really applies to you know all of the virtues, and and. Uh, uh, When, when you go through life as a man, you, you have to, if you're honest with yourself and, and, and recognize, you know, where you, who you are and where you've been, you realize that in each of those virtues, you've at times fallen short. And oftentimes, you know, early in life, you may not even have a clue about you know what the right way to live is what you know you know what characteristics uh, you know has you know god given uh to bless us with with our true nature our true identity um so the courage is 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 a great virtue it's an important virtue but Anybody who's had to exhibit courage, because usually courage is something that comes in the face of adversity or danger, the ability to go forward despite what's in front of you. Almost anybody who is able to exhibit courage, meaningful courage, has also experienced fear and cowardice and, 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 and you know, those thoughts that say, I can't do this, this is too much, and, and, and we grow through our weakness and, and into our strength uh, by uh, being open to God's grace. That's, the, that's a transformative factor that changes us from the man that we were to the man that we can be. Almost like the boy that we were, because it's kind of that's what that what that's what makes a man. There's a beautiful verse that I didn't want to read when I when I read this as when I was about 19 years old. I read this verse in I believe it's in the book of Sirach. It's, so it's not in the Protestant Bible, and it says these words: "My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal, for the chosen man is proven in the furnace." of much affliction but fall into the hands of god and not into the hands of man for as great as his majesty is so too is his mercy so young men out there and men of all ages people of all ages but especially to the young men tom and i would say to you prepare yourself for an ordeal an ordeal is in the lord is really a rite of passage in the lord you know, you may be facing a, a, a heartbreak, a woman that you thought you were going to be married to and spend the rest of your life with, or 
you might have been a football player and all of a sudden you have an injury that ends your career. Uh, you may be a young man who's, you know, experienced uh, the onset of cancer. Uh, you, you know, you may be in a situation where life just seems good and suddenly your parents divorce. Young man, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal for the chosen man is proven in the furnace of much affliction now the word proven I just remember Tom as a young man my dad got a new shovel a square shovel uh, I, don't, I don't think a lot of young men even know what a shovel looks like anymore you know there was the spade there was the shovel there was a and he took it to our to the backyard and he lit a fire started a small fire uh, built it up with some wood made it a hot fire he sharpened that the blade of that shovel and then he p put that blade into the fire and it establishes for some I don't know exactly how this worked but it, they called that proving the shovel it, it establishes the edge so it doesn't dull as easily this is what God means my son if you aspire to serve the Lord prepare yourself get ready it's coming there will be an ordeal and you think about the, uh, the, the, the Native American Indians. They used to call their, I think that specifically I knew the Sioux Indians very well uh, about them very much. I was, was in, their, in their reservation area and things like that in the Mandan Village and other areas in the Dakotas. They called it an ordeal. The rite of passage was an ordeal. And so young men, if, you, if you're facing adversity, don't lose hope, rise up. This is your passage. It's a portal through to your, to your being a man. What do, what do you think of, do you, can, do you believe you've lived through that passage, Tom? <laughs> well, you know, the, you mentioned the Sioux, and I think the, the, the ceremony, uh, uh, as you, you know, go from being a boy to a man, is called the sun ceremony, if I remember correctly. Does that, sound, does that ring That's, a bell? Yes, uh-huh. And, and it's a, it is a, a true ordeal, you know, but um we don't have for for most of society anything like that uh, uh so so you know the the things that test us uh uh happen in the course of life you know sometimes they happen you know to us uh sometimes these are things we do to ourselves or we choose it or we choose uh, or so a battle chooses us or we see a battle that must be fought and we enter into the fray yeah, and but but remember, um, uh, you know, we 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 come, you know, as sinners mm. to Jesus, and He came to us, uh, not not because uh, we were perfect. He came to us to redeem us from that, to to bring us to our true nature, you know, the 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 the. The, the vessel filled with grace and love. And and so so it's a mistake not to recognize, you know, that in in the course of life, you know, whether you're fifteen years old or fifty years old, you know, there's an opportunity, you know, to go, you know, and be that perfect person that you could be, uh, but you can't do that without reconciliation mm. and and sometimes it, it takes time over and over because you mm. you know you know we're 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 creatures that uh, that can make the same mistake a hundred times before we get the message right <laughs> so <laughs> that's a, that's a man for you right there <laughs> yeah well yes. we're talking about men now I mean <laughs> right. women you know are, are perfect we know that right so <laughs> but uh, um, uh, but but being, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, you know, taught us to love and forgive, you know, not just others, but ourselves. Yes. You know, so being, being, you know, able to achieve true reconciliation and growth, you know, means that we have to be able to accommodate the mistakes we make and continue to make and, and try and be a little bit better every day saint augustine mm -hmm. uh and, and and bear you're you're a true scholar here so correct me if i'm wrong but he my, my recollection is that he taught us that that we should make our effort to be a better man today than we were yesterday we need to take a break and every Tom. day just try to you know get a little bit better 
we're judging ourselves. In other words, we're not looking at other people. We Amen. don't need to be better than other people. We just need to make ourselves a little bit better every day. A little bit better every day is inch, inch by inch. It's a tremendous transition in doing that through the co cooperation with the Holy Spirit. We're talking with Tom Equals. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your host, Bear Wozniak. Our new season of Long Ride Home is available to you. It should be up, up almost any minute in uh, on Prime Video. You can see all of our episodes of Long Ride Home at our website, deepadventure.com. Become a mama bear or become a member of the Man Cave. And it's airing on EWTN, so we're stoked to present that to you. One of our cast members of Long Ride Home is here with us today, Tom Equals. Uh, Tom, we were talking about... Um, about I, I I love what you were saying about how if you just improve a little bit just an inch a day just but but, but take new ground take a little bit new ground every day uh, I, I had a great example of that when I was testing for my first uh, black belt my sensei said I, I want you to do this I want you to run this far you know and it was running in the mountains but he said every when I was first started I was on the I was on the the hills uh, on the road and he said just go one telephone pole further each day. On your run and little by little you develop it, it doesn't take it just takes just that extra little thing you know like I'm I, I'm having trouble getting up and getting getting my prayer time in well wake up one minute earlier every day and the, the other day I went through two months ago I went through COVID three months ago I went through a little bit of a COVID episode and uh, and so in my recovery there's a beautiful place here in Hawaii uh, that right here in Waikiki where a spring flows into the ocean flows up out of the ocean and uh, I would go down there, and when I was trying to recover, the ocean is so healing, and I, as you well know. And so I would swim out, and I would swim. I would tread water for just ten minutes because it would get my lungs moving. And then the next day I did eleven, and the next day twelve, until I made it up to an hour. And now I just I tread water for an hour every day. It's a big part of my prayer life. But um, it was just one minute ev added every day, that incremental thing. But you know, you're talking about how how um, adversity. Uh, we can change that into adventure. Adventure is just a very romantic word for things when went all wrong. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's really not an adventure until that happens. It's just an expedition. <laughs> but when, but I remember Tom, uh, um, you know, when you sail. When I, uh, I used to have a sailboat 
uh, in uh, Cali. Now, now we have, have another sa sailing vessel down in the British Virgin Islands that we invite people to come and have retreats with us on. Why, but I used to trail a long line behind the boat. Now I trail a dinghy. <laughs> But we trail a long line behind the boat, and it would be tied in knots. Every 10 feet, I would have a knot. And at the very end, that final knot on a, on a line, on a rope, on a boat, is called the bitter end. And for some of us, it's like you fall, you, you, you're, you're, you're feel like you're at the bitter end. You know, and we fall out of the boat. You grab onto one of those knots. Hopefully, if you don't catch the, the bitter end, then you're in trouble. But I think a lot of people find themselves in a position right now where they've just kind of hit, hit an end of themselves. And that really, that breaking point is the beginning point, right? Go ahead. Well, Bear, when I was younger, I, I used to, with a, a bunch of friends, uh, race sailboats down in the area around Miami. And uh, I don't know if you've ever done any sailboat racing. Yes, it, well, it depends it, on what type you're talking about. I did, I did the kind of the cruiser version of the racing, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, but it's, it's, uh, it's, the people are very competitive. And, and you're and, always competitive in a boat. Like if you're just cruising along and you see someone, you know, on the horizon a half a mile away, they don't know it, but you're racing them, right? You're always in a race. So, so anyway, I, uh, uh, we're in this race and it's, it's close and, and uh, a line came loose and I went to grab the line. It was attached, it was attached to a sail right. and I grabbed the line and, and it just jerked me right off the boat. Right? <laughs> And so the the boat's going, and I thought to myself, "Are they going to turn around?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a it's, it's a, a moment of truth. You find out, you know, who your friends really are. It's a very you know? lonely place, right? When you, I mean, <laughs> actually, a, a lot the, the real the the lessons learned out uh, sailing, maybe not in that quite that situation because there's a lot of boats out. But normally, if you fall off a boat, you're not going to come. You're not going to be found. It's over half the people who fall out of a boat aren't. So that tells you an awful lot about just our walk with the Lord as, as a Catholic. You know, the bark of Peter, the ship of Peter, the Catholic Church, stay in the boat. They always say one arm for the boat, one arm for, for, for yourself. You know, you, the, the, and, and you, we tie ourselves to the boat when we're, when we're sailing alone. You, tie, you, have a, you, have something, you tie yourself to that boat. You don't want to lose that. And I think a lot of people, we, it goes back to that same lesson about the bitter end. You know, if you want to... If you want to go through adversity, make sure you stay in the boat. You know, yeah. the, the teachings of the church, the sacraments yeah, a, of the church. You know, the, the, that's, a, that's a, a lonely feeling when you're, you know, treading water. And, and well, how long is, did it take them to come back? Did they even know? Well, you know, you know, well as you know, with sailboats, uh, it, they did come back and get me. Took thankfully. about 15. Did it take 10 minutes to, for them to get back? Oh, probably 15 minutes, maybe a little more, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to get the boat turned around and, you know, you're running with the wind. Now you've got to tack back and get to, you know, it was, <laughs> you know, and of course, of course, of, uh, of course, I, I had to take credit for losing the race. <laughs> well, you took uh, how many beers, how many rounds of beer did that cost you? <laughs> a couple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's always that statement of uh, when one some, when someone goes overboard, you just yell out "man overboard." The person who says that is the person who needs to keep their eye on that person while the, everybody else scrambles, and you point to that person. And I really think that's you, we see that in uh, in families where someone's gone overboard, someone's not, someone's gone off the deep end. They they're they're and we need to keep we need to point to them and 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 pray for them, intercede for them. Especially you, Mama Bears, intercede for those people. Those, go ahead, Tom. You got something you're going to tell me? I can just tell looking at you. <laughs> oh no, no, I, I, I was just nodding my head in agreement. You know the, uh, uh, you know the way I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, we have an opportunity to express our spirituality is in helping other people. Isn't that interesting? You know, what we do the things we say, you know, and and, and how we teach. Uh, and, and some lessons, you know, are, are more difficult to teach than others. Uh, and, and some tasks where we're helping people, you know, can be extremely difficult. Uh, but, but we have to try when the opportunity presents itself to us. Because in many ways, that's, that's a gift that God's giving us, you know, if we can, if we can uh, do something with it uh, that's positive and and, and life-changing. Well, let's talk about that. You know, I, uh, as a leader of, a, of, a, of a, a, a very significant corporation, as a president of that corporation, uh, leadership 
uh, within that corporation? How, what, what lessons have you learned there, and how would you apply that to just that the fact that every man is a leader? You know, every well, man. Well, you know, I, I, I learned leadership uh, in, in the military, and, and then, you know, in the course of, of my life, I, I ended up managing a law firm, and, and I'm the CEO of an immunotherapy research and development company now. Uh, and, you know, you, you lead uh, as much as possible by example, but you also have to lead with, with, a, with, with uh, you know, wisdom and clarity of vision so that you're able to explain to people, you know, what, not only what we need to do, but why we're doing it uh, so that, uh, so their heart's in it. And, mm. uh, you know, these are things that I try, you know, to, to achieve uh, in, in business and, and in family. Yeah, you know, and, and a big part of what you do in your business is failure. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, when people come to me I'm, as a CPA and they'll say, I've got a new business idea, I always ask them, well, how, how many businesses have you failed at? Because, you know, there's, if you, how much experience have, the, the reality of business have you had? When you're in an endeavor that's scientific research in nature, most 99% of that work has to be failure, doesn't it? But, it, I mean, like, you try this, you try that, and but the, it, it bouncing along, it brings you to the, you know the well, solution well the scientific method is based on testing yes you know you know that's the nature of an experiment you have a question and and you develop a test to answer the question and and if the question involves let's say a a, a, a drug that you're trying to develop uh, you want to know accurately uh, how that drug is working in a particular circumstance so so Sometimes, uh, you know, it's just as important to be successful in an ex experiment as it is to be unsuccessful because you, you learn things both ways. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and uh, you, the, the one thing you can't be afraid of is the test. Praise God. I mean, it's so many life lessons in that statement. So you young men out there, um, don't be afraid to fail. Um, and and uh, and you and you know a lot of times I will say Tom a lot of times, like you, you talk about these young football stars that are coming to the college football season now, and I've only got I got to wrap up with this, who have been the stars of their of their football team. They've never even really failed. Then they go to a major college, and suddenly they're second string and they're failing, and they're and they're you know what happened? What happened to I, I, my whole identity was wrapped up in me being the the, the stud on campus. And uh, and then, but it's it's really like when I teach someone how to surf, and their first wave they catch, like Doug Berry came out here. His first wave was amazing. Well, I, I know he learned nothing on that wave. He didn't. He, the next wave when he fell, he learned something. Oh, now I know why Bear said this, or now I know why I need to do it, not not do that. So, men embrace embrace the failures, and and, and caught up in all this, Tom, uh, is the is the reality that the Holy Spirit is coming alongside us and giving us the grace and the will to fulfill the particular purpose God has given us we've, we've run, overrun our time so can you give us 30 second wrap up of your for us point of wisdom I, I think that uh, uh, it's in the Bible mm. be not afraid mm. trust in the Lord mm. and and if we live our life with with that in mind we'll live a full life and a rich life and and if we grow in spirit and you know with maturity and 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 uh understanding you know we become better people day by day more than sort of like saint like i said saint augustine taught mm. you know the goal is to be a better man today than you were yesterday mm. and and that means you have to appreciate your shortcomings in order to understand how to improve what well, tom why is it taking me so long, long to get you back on our show will you come back in the next within the next six months or a year and talk story with us again oh, I'm, I'm 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 always uh, uh, at your disposal bear it's it's uh, you know we, we we have good conversations and uh i always learn a lot through the experience so uh, yeah it's be that's my pleasure Thank you, Tom. We're, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We got we to gotta take away. My wife always loves me to make the sign of the cross in, in Hawaiian. Ake makua, ke keiki, ame ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. 
Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.